Why would I play mana dorks in my terminus deck? Okay, this is a new one. I'm used to red cryptic command, but like one's red and one's blue. Are they both red when I zoom? We have we have Sakura Tribelder, which is a mana dork that isn't terrible with our four sweepers. So that's why we have Sakura Tribelder instead of like Arbor Elf or something silly like that. You could maybe make, and actually that's something I haven't tested. You could maybe make the argument that we should test Utopia Sprawl on this deck. I could see I could see that being a reasonable inclusion. Double search is kind of awkward here, but I think the rest of the stands I keep. Get him in for another land. Sprawl is like okay with that free. The, the problem with Sprawl is that like lands are just so attackable in this format with like field of rune and stuff like that and we don't actually have that much access to basic forests uh we went for we went four and one uh we died to eldrazi and taxes and we beat humans Steve does shuffle J Storms and he gains us health. Yeah. Sakura Tribelder is an undervalued card overall in, mo in, in modern. I think that card's very good on average. I chose not to opt because I knew I had a breeding pool on top of my deck that I wanted to draw there. I'm going to grab my extra green source in case we find a Corsair. Grabbing this Temple Garden also means that if we draw a Terminus and they have a creature, we can flip it out. Deal. Uh, if they're mill, it's a weird build of mill. I haven't seen Serum Visions or Inquisition in mill before. Could just be some kind of mid-range deck. What's going on, Sunko? Morning. Morning, Super Slink. Could eat a removal spell before it gets to get value, but I think it's fine to just play this out now. Yeah, it could become kind of like ensnaring bridge brew. This is modern. There's a lot of different things that people play in this format. I mean, like we're playing Bant Planeswalkers, right? There's definitely some argument to be just like waiting to play my Corsair of Crew Fix. So that way I can try and get a land off the top before they have a chance to like edict it with a Liliana or like kill it with a piece of removal, but... I think I like playing it out just to be resource efficient this turn. Okay. I think I'm bidding Celestial Colonnade here. Do I want to draw Field of Rude? I don't think so. That explains the uh the autoboro because they want they want quicksilver fountain to last. Correct. Temple Garden is a non-basic island. It's just the same as if it was under a blood moon, only it's an island instead of a mountain.
That's funny. Okay, so the Autobordo targets, gets targeted by the Quicksilver Fountain, and then you bounce it so it never becomes an island. That's cute. Hand it triggers revolt for fatal push. All right. Sweet. Now I get to uh, mill my uh, mill that opt and flip my ass to here. Wait, why is it making me click on my ass, Kanta? It. Comp that league, son. It's not a land. It's not a land, chat. I'll take a second screenshot of it being a free league. I'm just going to concede the match since the league's free now. Let's move on with our lives. All right, so for those of you that have never... It's actually been a while since I filed for comp. Just concede the match. Just concede the match, and then you file for comp later, and they give you back your entry fee for the league. No, I'm just, I'm just going to move along with our lives. Hey. Head A. Thank you very much for the four-month three subscription. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here for another month. I'm going to make a note to file for comp. Now both cryptics are red, yep. Sit back out in here, shall we? I wonder which line of code allowed that bug. Yep. Nobody. You're better. You're better off not wondering. You're better off not wondering. So they should already be aware of it. Well, I'm not filing a bug report to make them aware of it. I'm filing a bug report to get my, my 80 play points reimbursed. So I can free roll this league. Do I think I am the quickest scoop? You could probably argue I'm the quickest scoop among anybody playing Magic Online. There's a lot of people that play Magic Online with the goal of being miserable and grinding tickets. I play Magic Online with the goal of having fun.
How do you concede a match on Moto? You have to click the X for the match window. So there isn't a right click menu option, but if you click the X in the upper right hand corner, it gives you a hide event and concede op match option along with the cancel button. And unset where it's durable cards with how they work on Magic Online. We could have a Knight of the Reliquary that lets you sacrifice that lets you sacrifice any permanent you control. That would be great. All right, so this is getting Breeding Pool, so I can go Breeding Pool, Sun Petal Courser. Play a two-drop. Rats. Are you ready to begin scoping them mines, chat? Would you like to sculpt their minds? We're not playing the Quicksilver Fountain, Zach. We're playing against them. Or we conceded the match we were playing against them because it was bugged. When are those matchups bad for us? Cloud is here. Thank you for the two month three subscription. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I suppose Terminus is uniquely good here. It doesn't get spell colored. Did I just jam Corsair? I think I just jam Corsair. Like I want to try and work up to five lands for my Tefri. Oh. 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 No. You don't. You don't say. All right. Deal. Wheel, wheel, wheel. Mm. Can we just like take a minute to talk about detention chat? This card's really good. I will take my two for two, please. Actually, you know what? If they sack this Mausoleum Wanderer, I might just say no thanks. Because they're going to sack Mausoleum Wanderer here, right? Sure. Now this is like super okay for us. Because I cast this. They sack this, I desphere this, I get this. And I get to keep my courser. I'm just playing the decks that people pay me to play. If they have a rattle chains here, we maybe get got, but they don't have rattle chains, we're in a great spot. They have one card left and it's rattle chains. Kazenti, thank you for the nine month three subscription. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Yeah, I don't I don't know if there's anything we could really do here. Don't know that there's anything we could really do here. What would it take for me to play commander on stream? Like 1v1 commander or like multiplayer commander? To play a league with a format that I don't normally play, I usually look for a hundred dollar donation. Because the reason why I don't play other formats is generally because they're less well received than modern. The few times we've played competitive competitive commander in the past. Yeah, basically what Burgle said. <laughs> 1v1 equals money. Multiplayer equals a lot more money. Alright, so I'm going to 7 here. I can just like path snap path though, right? I got an attack with Corsair here. Can't block, must attack, same thing, right? If they have if they've drawn anything else, we're pretty much just dead here. So we basically just have to like work on the basis that like they bricked off. I would play a standard league for a hundred dollar donation. 
I'm planning to probably for at least a couple of weeks play standard for just normal donation amounts once we get to um once we get to rotation. No, I don't think so, Zanman. My goal was to kill both of them. And if I target the Phantasmal image with the Detention Sphere, I don't get to kill both of them. Man, that's unfortunate. I guess I should have targeted the other one. I have the logic nod here. I just can't snap path now. Counter unless you pay two. So I'm not dead on board. But we are dead on the inside. So I need to like hit a land here. I don't even know what that does for us at this point. So I can do, I could do this. I mean, they could have had Spell Queller too there to make our path a little bit worse. But yeah, we definitely got, got, got. What, what is delving two cards from my yard accomplish? I still couldn't cast any other spells that turn. If I delve two cards, I can't snap path still. So I don't, I don't accomplish anything. It was just a different deck. Yeah, it's the the only out here is Jace Brainstorm, and I need Opt Terminus underneath this Hollowed Fountain, right? I don't have outs any other way. I'm just like I'm just like taking a second to think. Snap Path means I'm still taking three next turn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only out. I had already paid for Path to Exile, Miss Fortune. So Path is one, Logic Knot's a minimum of two, which leaves me two lands. See if we can be as lucky as they've been. Nope, not even a little. Uh, no, paying for Terminus was not an option. They were countering unless I paid four. Board, board my counter spells out. Click's okay here. It's like not amazing, but it's fine, I think. It's like bringing more spot removal, basically. I did not have a six mana. Oh, Blessed Alliance kills the images. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. I wasn't thinking about it from the image angle. I think it's not very good in general, but when you add the image angle, it's probably worth playing. Honestly, I think the position we were in, even if I could have paid three to guaranteed sweep their board, I think with the cards I had set up in my hand, I was right not to pay for the Terminus. Like, if the Detention Sphere had removed both their lords, the game was basically ending on the spot, and we only got punished by exactly Rattle Chains. We only had one card in hand. So, like... I feel like I feel like that's playing too scared. Like remember, just because just because you don't win the game with your play doesn't mean your play was wrong. That's why we call them percentage plays. Sounds good, Hetty. Yeah, as always, just submit everything through the form under the stream. In general, do you board in Stony Silence against Aether Vial? No. Just ignore their Aether Vial. Aether Vial is card disadvantage. Just kill them.
Oh, the link below the stream. Fixed. I pushed some stuff around last night. So, yeah, the link below the stream was broken. I thought WordPress auto-forwarded all of that stuff, but apparently I missed that one. That link is now updated below the stream. I think I just wanted the tension sphere here and take some of their pressure off the table. Just go like D sphere into tap land. So the fact that they let the detention sphere simply take the selfless spirit as opposed to sacrificing it implies to me that they probably have some enchantment removal in their deck right now. Which isn't unreasonable considering we showed them both search and attention here last game. There's a deck on your screen, Bertazzi. You can also type exclamation point deck in chat to get a direct link to the deck list, assuming that's not working for you. Amplitude, thank you very much for checking out, honey. I appreciate the support. Welcome. Okie doke. I classify myself as an MTG pro. Yes. I make my profession is playing Magic the Gathering. In fact, I'm probably one of the few people in the world who actually makes their full living playing Magic. Like, T Tularian Community College is more of a Magic professional than a lot of people, than most people who play on the Magic Pro Tour. Like, he makes his living playing magic, or doing magic stuff. Alright, it's not looking good for our hero, chat. It's not, it's not looking good for our hero. I should have played basic forest last turn, and the reason for that is... Now if I draw a Courser, I don't have double green mana to play Courser before I play a land. So I should have... Oh, and Mike Teffrey's dead. That's sad. Even Terminus isn't that good here. I just don't have anything going on. Alright. Well, I mean... It's a thing that might be useful at some point. Yeah, feel free to message me, Knight. Or post on... Post on, uh, post in Discord. Yeah, as Optic. Basically, like, the people who can derive their yearly income from Magic are, like, the four people you listed, plus, like, the four Pro Tour winners, and, like, the couple of top spots at Worlds. Yeah, you have to imagine Saffron Olive makes a decent amount of money. He must from Goldfish. Yeah, the fact that we flooded while not drawing Colonnade really sucks. We do have Field of Rune at least to kill this Mutavolt, but it's probably too little too late. Nah, I don't really, I don't really get into the lore. That's true. I have no idea what the SCG guys make. I have to imagine they they make a they make a decent chunk to be worth living in Roanoke. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Well, 
We're not dead on board. I honestly don't know if because you talk a lot in your stream, but you seem to be the smartest player I've seen on this game. Since you seem to play decks and tune decks, you especially get so many types of decks. I mean, like, the donation system we have grabs a lot of decks, too. But I definitely think, like, there's a lot of people, and it's really easy to fall into the habit of, like, not actually engaging with the viewers or saying something when you have music playing. I don't think Jim or Todd didn't stream anywhere near enough to be considered full-time. They both stream with some consistency, but, or maybe I'm just not paying attention, but, like, Todd takes really long breaks. Todd would probably be very successful if he actually buckled down and streamed full-time. He's got a good personality. He's a decent magic player. But at any rate, there is just, you know, even if you pick out everybody that you might imagine that could make their full time living off magic, it's still probably under 20 people. Under 30, maybe, maybe 20, 20, maybe under 30. And it depends on what you consider a living wage, too, right? Like, if you consider, you know, 20 to 30 grand a year, a living in some places that might, that might cover a living. From the vault MTGO where we get like, yep. LGS owners are buying and selling product. I'm talking about like playing magic or making content that's about playing magic. Obviously there's a ton of people that like make money buying and selling games, but they're not playing games. They're buying and selling. Yeah, living wage is definitely relevant, relative, relevant, relative. <laughs> Moto Ponder, blue, look at your top three, flip a coin, if heads, shuffle. Mmm, my body is ready to get blood mooned. Who's ready to get Blood Moon, Chad? Everybody raise your hand. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the upsides to Freaky Kiki is that like producing content like I do is a flexible a flexible place, a flexible thing to be doing, right? Like I could, I could do my job from anywhere that has a stable internet connection and electricity. Two copies of Azkans and I feel like they've been glued together in these games. Having a roommate in New York if you only make 75. <laughs> It's funny, like, Christy and I are considering moving in the spring. Um, and we've been looking at houses in, like, the area where we live. And you can get, like, I don't know, three and 4,000 square foot homes for, like, under 250,000. It's just, like, these, these things are huge. Uh, I'm going to grab a basic forest here. So this way, if we draw a courser, we can play it before we play a land. The Midwest has a lot of cheap houses. Concur. Like, the house we live in now is, you know, 2,400 square feet. And it's like less than the house I grew up in, in the Chicago suburbs. It was like 1,300 square feet. <laughs> 
Thrag Tusk. All right. We've thoroughly entered the mid-range bracket, chat. Stumbled firmly across the line here. All right, so I'm going to go Steve. Search for it. Can't, uh, and then I'm going to leave these last two up so I can opt into a Terminus next turn if I, if I hit it, if I'm so lucky. Houses on fire in California are two million. That's so much money. So they shocked in here. So I'm going to use my health total as a touch of a resource. I'm going to not try and find Terminus just yet. Because this way, if they play out any more creatures post-combat, I get to potentially opt Terminus them away as well. I mean, there's definitely some more expensive house than, like, what Christy and I have looked at. Like, we, while she was just, like, randomly scrolling page of our drive around, she found, like, a $750,000 house, but it would, like had a lake and like a guest house attached to it like a small body of water and like a boat dock and i was just like all right sure yeah why not get the lake a lot right 750k is a little bit outside of our budget we're gonna be <laughs> probably gonna be shopping under 300,000. Don't tell me you don't want to stream on the internet from your guest house MTG domicile while overlooking a lake while fishing. The Bamante residence, right? Maddie, we bought you we bought you an accompanying house. Battle cattle. All right, chat. We've got, what, two looks at Terminus at their end step and then two looks on our turn. There are four Terminuses in our 46-card deck, and we've got four shots at them. But don't all streamers make... Yeah, exactly. Every streamer makes what Ninja makes. Ninja's the, Ninja's the norm. He's our average. So I'm actually going to keep this opt because it gives me extra looks at Terminus on their next turn. Because at this point, we need Terminus or we're dead. Nope! That one can stay right there. Yes, please. And this is this is really why Terminus is so good as a sweeper in these decks. Like, we get to Terminus them here, and I don't have to tap four lands to do it. Like, the fact that I get to, like, leave the rest of my mana up while I cast this card is so absurd. So absurd. Insane in the membrane. Do 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 do. Beep 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 beep. You playing in Solar Flare? No, Solar Flare is an Esper deck. Flare. Play out the last tribe elder. All of the tribe elders are here and they are judging you. I mean, the other thing is too, just like at a certain point, it's just like too big, right? Like even like the houses that are in like, you know, like what am I going to do with 4,000 square feet? That's so much space. That's like twice the size of the house that I have right now, which is already like a good amount of house. <laughs> Have more kids. That's, that's you know. Two two's a good number of kids, chat. Don't let them don't let them outnumber you. 
Anybody who's thinking about becoming a parent, best piece of advice I ever got, don't let them outnumber you. I'm gonna do this, and before, before we field here, I'm gonna go ahead and check for Terminus. Uh, huh. I think I'm in for Path. I just wanna not die to this beast at this point. Kids are really expensive. We're just like, you know, especially with both of us working now, daycare is, Look, looking forward to the kids going to like actual school full time and not having to pay for daycare. Time to start putting donation decks in terms of square footage. A hundred square feet gets you a commander league. <laughs> Josh, thanks for the 213 subscription. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, we want to leave a forest for Nissa. Not want to land. I would like to transform. Yeah, this list is really sweet. We've played it uh, a number of times on stream in the past. You can find uh, you can find a page about this deck list on my website, jeffhoagland.com. It's a link to that below the stream. Let's do the time warp again. Do 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 do. Can you pay for a house in... This is the house the bits built. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Is Wizards happening today? It is not. Oh, I tapped in a way that doesn't let me cast Cryptic Command. Gosh, I'm stupid. Wizards. Wizards got outvoted by a couple of people. You know, honestly, one of the things when we look at the new houses, the current lot we have is like huge and upkeeping that much yard outside either costs a lot of money to have done or is a lot of physical work for me to do it myself. So I think when we look, um, when we look for new homes in the spring, we're looking for something a slightly smaller lot size. If they have like a planeswalker here, we could be in trouble. Although I guess we have like cryptic bounce, untap, snap, cryptic counter. Yep, assuming nobody cuts anything, we have uh, blue, white spirits, and Jund coming up in the two leagues after this one. Moo cow, don't bother me. Moo cow, don't bother me. Bum 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 I strongly believe there will not be Jund today. There is never Jund, only line cuts. Do I plan to stream Warhammer? Yeah, once the Warhammer digital app releases for for the desktop, I I plan to stream a little bit of it. The paper card game has been a lot of fun. All right, so they're out of basics. This Azkanta is not flipping. It's just sitting here to make our average draw better because we already have a flipped one. I'm going to hold on to that because we could draw a flip Nissa. I'm actually just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. I just want to hold Cryptic Command up and activate my Azkanta, I think. So Moto's bugged, so it's going to let us cast this red Cryptic with blue lands. Moto, Moto has a lot of bugs in it, like letting you cast Red Cryptic with blue mana. They have many of the AOS Champions booster cards. I think I've got like half a dozen of them. There we go. We're just looking, looking for some friends to lock the game up here, chat. Looking, looking for some friends to lock the game up. Mana leak in your bin. Yeah, probably. No, don't transform.
In the nicest way possible, Mage, I don't trust Magic Online to do that. We've entered the Tefri Plus as Kanta stage of the game. That is correct. We're going to avoid cracking this fetch land if possible because going to three puts us dead to Siegemen Rhinoceros. I'd prefer to not be dead to Siegemen Rhinoceros. I guess the Mana Leak could have been useful for sure stopping a double spell turn. Although Logic Knot's going to accomplish that as well now. Is this a good Hollowed Fountain deck? Eh, it's a playable Hollowed Fountain deck. It's probably worse than straight blue-white control like we've been playing, but it's got some sweet, some sweet ones in it. Birds of Paradise is not strictly worse than that deck because Bur the deck actually needs, like, red and black mana. It's kind of look off there. Brain, do the brainstorm thing. Perfect. Look at this. We get to, oh, I don't even know what to do. So I'm going to put this back and put this back. I'm going to play Nyssa, grab the forest, then we just brainstorm back into our deck, shuffle the other one away. My feelings have changed with regards to Hollowed Fountain in the pure blue white control deck. I feel like at this point... Oh, no! Oh, no! She was supposed to be my bae. That's so sad. Now we're just going to have to win with these other two idiots. Now I just have to win with Tefri and Jace, chat. I wanted to win with Nissa too. That's so rude. Neil Drex, thank you very much for the bits. I appreciate that. Welcome. Oh, I could have cracked the Misty in response. Good line. Yeah, I forgot about that. I kind of didn't want to go to three. Probably should have gone to three. It's been so long since I've played with her. Yeah, I definitely could have cracked the Misty. I'm going to trim the gate and mana leak here. I'm going to bring in explosives and detention sphere. I don't know if this is a tracker matchup. I feel like we're not quite on full grind against them. I definitely want the sweepers. I think... Boarding in the trackers while I'm keeping the sweepers seems medium. Yeah, for those wondering, I could have cracked the Misty Rainforest to flip the Nissa in response to the removal. On this channel, what isn't a tracker matchup? Touche. No, I think I think tracker's not supposed to be here. For now, I'm leaving blue-white control list for a higher donation. I, do, I don't want to play blue-white control every day. I just don't. It's, it's a three-hour league most of the time when we play a two. So, like, playing blue-white control is a time that I could spend playing, like, two leagues with a lot of other decks. So, like... No, she wouldn't have still died to Abrupt Decay because when the Flip Planeswalkers transform, they exile themselves and re-enter with loyalty counters because that makes sense, I guess. Um, so they'd be a new instance of the card. So once she exiles and returns herself to play, she'll be a new instance of the same card. Magic. Magic doesn't track cards through zones, so whenever a card leaves a zone and comes back, it's a new instance of that card. I don't think Purge is good enough here. You could maybe argue that I want Rest in Peace, but I didn't see anything graveyard-based other than Lingering Souls out of them. If we need something like Unburial Rites in this next game, I might bring in Rip, but in the dark, I'm going to hedge and not bring in Rip. Uh, Grishelbrand finished four and one. We ch we we finished the league by killing humans on turn one, or they conceded to turn one. Grishelbrand, I should say. I think as things get more efficient and tuned, if you don't manage the format by using your ban list, 
in non-rotating formats, they will eventually just get faster. A lot of people act like banning a card in magic in any format means wizards has failed or like messed up as game designers and i really think that's an absurd stance to take especially in non-rotating formats like modern like it's impossible to test all the combinations of how large these card pools are banning cards is something that just like needs to happen with some consistency Why did the human player concede they had till turn four? Because behind, you know. Yeah, I would say in in its current state, modern on average is like a turn 2.5 format. A lot of, and this is, this is something that I think a lot of people don't think about or don't realize is that the game doesn't have to literally end. Your health total doesn't have to hit zero for the game to be over. 90 plus percent of turn three cards, especially when they're on the play, they've ended the game. But you're going to keep playing Magic if you want to for whatever reason. And I think that's the big thing. That's why Summer Bloom got banned, right? Like while Summer Bloom didn't literally kill you on turn two a lot of the time, the game was effectively over on turn two. Yep. I think Tron is warping modern. I don't think anything that exists currently in modern is really warping it. I think there's a few decks that are probably just slightly better than some of the other things in the format. And I wouldn't mind if they saw a slight power level down tick. But overall, the current format is very reasonable even as is. They, they probably don't have Collected Company in their Siege Rhino Thrag Tusk deck. This is probably a Restoration Angel, I'd imagine. People are against any changes because people hate change. It's just what it comes down to. I love the people that are like, you should just never unban anything if the format's healthy. And it's like, well, we constantly print new cards that change the format. So unbanning a card to change the format isn't that different than like printing a new card to do the same. When you're playing Grishelbrand and opponent Eldrazi's place with Grishelbrand and put him with Gorio's Vengeance. No, it would not be sacrifice minus three card because it's a new instance of the same thing. So, bans don't mean you have to change decks, except in the case of, like, Splinter Twin. That's why banning cards like Ancient Stirrings and Faithless Lootings... No, I don't think a ban list should be as short as possible. I think the goal of a ban list should be to create an enjoyable format. I think, I think doing anything else other than having your goal be to create an enjoyable format is silly. I think the purpose of a ban list should be to make the games interesting and engaging. I think, I think Dig Through Time would probably be okay. I also think that you shouldn't ban or unban more than probably two things at any given point. So even though I think there were a bunch of changes that could be made in the format, I think you would want to make them slowly over time. The ban and restricted list update is coming up on Monday. So while I, I'm guessing I would put money on... <laughs> well, well, well. All right. Uh, no respectable adult person would play a card game with the artwork that the Force of Will TCG has, in my opinion. They, I, I've never played the game, so I can't talk about the gameplay, but I know they've severely limited their potential market by choosing to put the artwork on their cards that they put on their cards. Uh... 
All right, so Big Papa Tef coming in. Yeah, that's the one that's like the artwork is basically borderline. Borderline nudity. Sure, potentially, Jack. Potentially. But like, you could... But, but by, by that same mantra, Jack, a new deck getting introduced to the format could also do the same thing. So like, you're at a risk of the thing you're describing happening, happening, even without bannings or unbannings. Like, every time we print... Every time we print a new card into Modern, we risk invalidating decks that exist or making them significantly worse. I mean, just think about the decks that are good right now. Hollowed Bridgevine, Hollowed One Humans, all of these decks are very powerful decks that didn't exist six months ago. These are, these are decks that now exist only because new cards were printed to make them possible to exist. I think I just want to path this. I'm going to wait one more turn. Tefri untaps my lands. He's a good dude. Yeah, KCI. KCI, how, how recent is Scrap Trawler? Scrap Trawler is pretty recent, right? Like, if you compare the cards that have been printed in recent memory from Standard and their impact on Modern to the impact of the average unbanned Magic card... New cards that get printed are much more impactful than modern than cards that get unbanned. These are cards that have been unbanned, chat. Ancestral Vision, Thopter Sword, one of those two. Sword of the Meek, I think, was the one that was banned. You know, Jace, Bloodbraid Elf. These are all cards that see small fringe amounts of play. Wild Nakatl, Bitter Blossom. Like, Valakut is one of the only cards that's actually been unbanned to, like, have a, a super lasting impact on the format, in my opinion. You could argue Grave Troll is the most impactful because it was re-banned, but you could also argue that Grave Troll was fine and Cathartic Reunion and Prized Amalgam are what got that card banned. And Faithless Looting. They, you know, like, Grave Troll's probably fine if Faithless Looting doesn't exist, right? Insolent Neonate, yep. I'm going to get a third basic island here. And then probably another basic plane. Just because I've got double white cards in my hand. I fully expect Wizards of the Coast to say no changes in all formats on Monday. I think there's a lot of changes they could make to make the format as good or potentially better, but I fully expect them to just say no changes in all formats. Let's just turn this into an island, I think. It's very rare that there's anything wrong with modern. This idea that like if the format's good, you should leave everything alone is silly. This this card is much better than Jace the Mind Sculptor and it's not particularly close. Uh, the blue-white deck list that I posted on my website last night has one copy of Gideon in it. I think Gideon's very reasonable. You can read about my opinion on the ban list and what I would do and why in my article on Cool Stuff from yesterday. The TLDR is I, I think you should ban the enablers, not the payoffs. 
Make decks worse, don't make them unplayable. I'm going to go ahead and path this, try and keep my Tefri alive. Especially since I have another Gideon here. We're flooding out again, but like, hopefully through the power of our Planeswalkers, we'll be able to pull it out again. This feels a little bit bad if we like find another Terminus next turn, but I think it's pretty reasonable here. Is it weird that I use your game as a timer for my food? I don't know how consistent that is. It's kind of funny, though. Can I get a witness? That's really annoying, because it means that this other Gideon's going to die. A lot of the cards that are banned in Modern are banned because they were too good when they were standard legal, or were too good in Modern a decade ago. And believe it or not, Modern has changed a lot in the last the last few years. I actually think or extended, yeah, that's true. I actually think Pod is probably a fine unban. I think Pod is probably a fine unban. And I probably should have talked about this in the article. I think there's more cards than you can unban than just what I listed in the article, but I also think you shouldn't change that much at the same time. So now if they abrupt decay this, we get to do the fetch land trick. Thought Scour. Hmm, this is unfortunate. So this is gonna force them to spend two cards here killing her. Which is which is nice. Because then they're not gonna have the abrupt decay to kill my to kill my Chad. I played a different forest than I revealed, probably. I looked at Legacy and was like, oh, okay, Delver's still good. Yeah, and honestly, with the Deathrite Shaman ban, uh, Legacy is more same Z's than, than it's ever been. Because, like, we had, like, this Deathrite Shaman era, but, like, now that era is over, right? And don't get me wrong, there are a bunch of cards in the modern, modern band list that deserve to be there. Glimpse of Nature, um, Rite of Flame, Seething Song, Chrome Mox, they'd probably leave those cards there. Hypergenesis, GTA, Punishing Fire, those, those cards can stay right where they're at, chat. See if they have another path. Gosh! Can you feel the value flowing through you, chat? Can you can you feel the value flowing through you? I think there is more than just power level reasons why a card should stay banned in modern. I think you could make the argument that Punishing Fire is a fine power level for modern, but I will also make the argument that Punishing Fire creates rancid gameplay and should stay banned because it creates rancid gameplay. When you've been live to events, how many subs do I get to interact with? I haven't been to that many events. And I don't really ask people if they're explicitly subs when they come up to me. I just like sign whatever people want and say hello to anybody. Path to exile. Uh, I'm going to let this happen and I'm going to elect to not shuffle because I want the Nissa that's on top of my deck. That's a pretty refreshing human. What do you mean? Like, why, why wouldn't I just talk to everybody? 
Hisses and flaps arms wildly. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we get to flip this bad boy over. This is the fun part of the game. The part where we've won, but our opponent is still refusing to concede, so we get to draw a bunch of cards. Yay! Do I... All right, I'm gonna do this first because if I find a path, I'm gonna make a 4-4. If I don't find a path... Oh, I found a... Let's do the time warp again. Do 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 Baby, baby, baby. Is there really a difference between drawing cards and winnings? That's a good question. There really isn't, right? I mean, I do enjoy activating all of these cards. I do, I do enjoy activating all of these cards. All right, so. Oh, yeah, just, oh, just, can ya? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I would like one logic knot, please. I think we're pod racing, yep. Alright, now I get to pass, and I get to untap this and this. We have cryptic plus logic knot plus path up. I can't even hold all these cards, chat. I can't even hold all these cards. So, we actually just have so many cards that I'm just going to bounce this beast. We're going to counter the Imperial Rites, Lightning Bolt the beast. because It's a red cryptic, so Lightning Bolt is one of its modes. <laughs> all right, all right. We're one and one now. We lost one round round one to a moto bug. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Welcome. Everyone's having a great Thursday, almost the weekend. If you're new, my name is Jeff Hogan. I'm a full-time stream, meme, content producer, whatever you want to call me. I'm here playing Magic 30 plus hours a week. Uh, starting next week, I'm going to have a slightly new schedule. I'm going to be live 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Standard Cornfield time uh, every, every weekday. Uh, if you're enjoying my stuff and you want to help keep me here, keep me doing what I do, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me here day in and day out. I wouldn't be employed without their wonderful support. Uh, past subscribing, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com. I love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. If you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll one. Blah! You say use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. Honey is a free browser add-on that when you install it using link bit.ly forward slash Honey, you'll be supporting my content here at absolutely no cost to yourself. What Honey does is when you're shopping online, it takes a look at the stuff in your shopping cart and then searches automatically for some coupon codes to save you money on things you're going to be buying anyways. If it can save you money, it offers to do so. And if it can't, it leaves you completely alone. Lisa would like to get you on your way to a better night's sleep. Christy and I have been sleeping with Lisa for the last two months now, and we really love it. I don't think we'd ever go back to a traditional pillow top mattress. You can save $160 or more on your new mattress by checking out link bit.ly forward slash googlebed us and bit.ly forward slash googlebed ca. And of course, I'd like to welcome everyone out there to Hoaglandia. Please talk to your friendly neighborhood moderator about receiving your complimentary timeout. That's the first chill stumble we've had in a while. This is, this is in fact live and unrecorded television. I'm just very good at consistency. I'm like a deck full of ponders and brainstorms, chat. I'm very boring and do the same thing every time. 
That those were shots fired, by the way. All right, flame blade adept. Um, I probably play this. Hey, Rain Spider, thanks for checking out, honey. I appreciate the support. Welcome. Yeah, the blue-white deck we played the last couple days, Zach, has been A+. I am not going to the Dallas Open. I don't I don't actually know if I'm going to make it out to any more, any more paper tournaments this year. I think Vegas is not end up not happening. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to make it to the Invitational or not. I think this was an upgrade for us, right? I am qualified for the Invitational, but... In addition to having to take, you know, probably two or three days off work to get to the Invitational, I also, um, I also, you know, have to spend like a thousand dollars to get there because flights to Roanoke are not cheap. How good would top be in blue white control? Absurd. Flights from the airport in Bloomington to the small airport in Roanoke usually tend to range anywhere from $400 to $800 round trip. How much money to sponsor the trip? I need to, I need to figure that. I need to talk to my wife about it and set a donation goal. I, I think we might set a donation goal. Honestly... I think um, I think I'm gonna wait until we see what happens with standard rotation. If standard is sweet, I'll probably put up a donation goal to try and get me to the invitational. But if standard is not cheap, then sometimes it's cheaper to fly out of O'Hare Gengar. But what you also have to remember is that time is money. So it takes me, you know, four or five hours to get to and from O'Hare as opposed to the airport where I have to show up 15 minutes before my flight leaves. And that's all, that's all time I could be spending, you know, streaming or working or hanging out with the kids. The Invitational is just standard and modern. So if standard is good and we might want to play some standard on stream anyways, it's probably worth putting up a goal to get there. But like I have to, I'd have to prep for the tournament too. So I need to be playing standard. So, like, if I go, we'd have to be playing standard on stream. You know what? I messed up here, right? Because we were talking. I messed up because I'm bad and distracted. Uh, I think I should have snapped path here, right? Because if I snap path, they wouldn't have been able to put their flame wake into play this turn. Oh, they have a delve threat anyways. Okay, feel less bad. They have a delve threat anyways, less bad. It's not all money, it's promotion. It's like promotion to a degree. It's promotion if I do well and get on camera a bunch. But it's really not promotion if I just, like, you know, have a middling result or, like, 0-3 drop. Terminus. It's not a Terminus. All right, so... I think I just put Steve into play here. Like, plus on Gurmag. And then, like, Steve gets in front of Hollowed One and gets us to land. That's not true at an Invitational, two mos. In an Invitational, there's no buys, and I'm very unlikely to be on camera round one. I think at an Open, I probably have a pretty good chance to consistently be on camera round one because, like, all the SCG, like, grinders have buys, so they're not going to be there. They're not going to be playing round one. But at an Invitational, I certainly would have very, very little shot of being on camera round one. SCG. SCG is very good. They still have to... They still have a page to put up for you? Yeah, I think so. I, I'd imagine they do. I can't imagine they delete those if they already have them put together. Standard's been bad for a while. Terminus! I guess I can snap opt on their turn. How greedy is it to snap opt? 
Am I in a position where I need to snap opt? If I snap opt and miss, I only take eight. I think I'm just passing here and snap. I think snap snap opt is like the chance to like win the game on the spot, right? And like regardless of what we do here, we're kind of behind. Like playing Corsair is bad. Playing Gideon just like gains like eight or nine or so. My kingdom for a terminus. My king my kingdom for a terminus, chat. And when we target the opt here, you could maybe argue that I should just path here and then try and contain the board, but I think I think I need a terminus to contain the board regardless. Survey says. It's a miracle! Magic's a skill game chat. Never forget that. Better player always wins, etc., etc. Lucky, lucky, lucky. All right, Hoglandy, I'm shipping you off to wherever this terminus came from. All right, now let's draw an untapped land and cast a Tefri. Untapped land, Tefri. Untapped land, Tefri. Oh, man. So. Hmm. 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 What do I want to do here? I could Lad Chad plus. How do we feel about Sakura Tribelder plus Search? Don't block with Steve. And then next turn, flip Search, play Tefri, use Steve to defend Tefri. I think, I think that's the line. Because this is guaranteed to flip because I have seven cards in the bin. There, there could be an argument for playing Lad Chad. I think playing Corsair is too greedy. I think I think I just like... Like, I'm at 15. That's pretty high. I could also just play Chad next turn. I kind of want to get Tefri going, though. If they don't play anything else out here, I'm just going to get Tefri going, I think. Ooh, that's a good one. I don't have double white, though. It's not an instant, either. Worse than condemn here. I think I want to Courser oust now. Yeah, I think I want to Courser oust now. And now, since I hit that, I can Courser, I can Courser Gideon. Ah, uh, Moto, we're shuffling the deck is always optional. I'm going to be conservative and plus on Flame Blade and plan to sack Steve because I want to shuffle this card off the top of my deck anyways. This is why we plussed on the flame blade. All right, so bird's coming back here. So we're going to take two. We're going to gain one from the tribe elder. Listen, chat, I just want to be fair to Magic Online. We can't say with confidence that there's a scry bug or a shuffle bug or not, but we can be certain that the shuffling and scrying code in Magic Online was created with the same pristine quality that the rest of the application was created with.
So just just in like and and for all purposes of being fair and balanced, I just think it's only fair to point that out. Def definitely can't be sure, and it's definitely written with the same the same amount of quality you expect from everything else with this application. That's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one. So I can. I can do this, pick the detention sphere up. And then I get another chance to land on top, just like that. Shock that bad boy in. And then I get to go D sphere the bird, oust, oust the Gurmag Angler, Gideon plus on Flame Blade. Got a cryptic on top too. Oh baby. Oh baby. Get him out of here, chat. Get it out of here. I'm not attacking with Corsair because the two damage isn't super relevant and I don't want to get attacked by a blood ghast. Gosh! Just the smartest and the thinnest. Don't mind if it does. Tap three. Draw a card. Yeah. All right. So we get to bring in rest in peace. We get to bring in celestial purge. We get to bring in detention spear. We get to cut these silly counter spells. Uh, I probably want to cut time warp, right? Probably want to. No, I'm gonna leave time. I'm gonna cut Nissa. This is a little slow. I don't think we want Blessed Alliance here. Honestly, I'm not sure that this card should still be in our board. It's possible it should just be a second oust, or it should be another condemn. Or, or a, a first condemn. Oh. Could be another purge too, yeah, maybe. Like a disenchant. Cut Snapcaster for Nissa. Now, I think Snap is pretty good. I think people too aggressively cut. So here's, here's the logic with Rest in Peace and Snapcaster Mage. If you have a Rest in Peace in play... You can afford for your Snapcaster Mage to only be a 2-1 because this card turns off a lot of their deck. If you don't have a Rest in Peace in play, Snapcaster Mage is one of your best cards so it's going to give you more Path to Exiles, which is one of our best cards in this matchup. It's like a path that like gains us some life by blocking. There's a pretty, pretty easy mulligan here. This hand's not amazing, but it's definitely a keep. They go Temple Garden into Steve. Why Time Warp over Nexus of Fate? Because it costs five. Seven mana is a lot of mana, chat. It's, it's a lot of mana. The only reason we play Nyssa in this deck is because she's a card that helps us hit land drops. While she has an ability at seven mana, she definitely has, has utility before that too. All right, we're really good at drawing Steve today. All right, sweet. They binned a hollowed one there, so hopefully they don't have another one of those. That's a bird. They have two cards left. If they don't have a hollowed one, we should be pretty okay. You can find my preferred Bridgevine list along with my preferred deck list for lots of other things we've played on stream on my website. 
jeffhoagland.com. Click the deck list button in the menu. You can link it in, in Twitch chat too if you want, Nicholas. Resolves. No, Knight, Knight of the Reliquary doesn't generate card advantage. Nissa generates actual card advantage for us, which is important in my mind. Definitely getting another Plains here so we can cast Gideon next turn. If they find a hollowed one here, we could actually be in trouble because they're hitting us for six here. And then like if they hit us for six and then have like six power left over, it's a lot of damages. Well, we're actually dead to another faithful sitting there. Well, Does appear like you are currently sub snow scheme. So I think I'm supposed to play Tri Belder here. So here's the thing. I die to lightning bolt off the top if I play Tri Belder. But if I just opt if I wait a turn to opt tournament, I get one more shot at it. So I think I'm supposed to wait a turn. I can also just like go Gideon. I think I just go Gideon plus here. I think Gideon plus is probably fine. Because that way if I do hit Terminus, I can like emblem the Gideon. To not die to Bolt. No, I'm not Gideon embleming this turn. Gideon emblem is basically the same as plusing, only I lose my Gideon. Although I guess this way I, I lose the Street Wraith and Faithless Looting. Just should have believed, chat. I get by with a little help from my friends. I get high with a little help from my friends. Do 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 do. Can I can I talk about this terminus card and how incorrectly built your your blue white deck is if it doesn't have four of them? Can we just like just talk about it for a minute so everybody can appreciate how important how important this card is? I'm not gonna sacrifice Sakura Tribelder here because I want to use him to shuffle my Jace Brainstorm here in half a second. I'm gonna hold him back too because in case they draw Blood Ghast. Also, Opt. Opt has just been really good, right? I think I want to redraw this opt rather than crack Steve this turn. Uh, I don't even really need this terminus that they're just packing it in. Okay. All right. All right. We're two and one in matches played. Uh, the first match we conceded because the opponent was playing a card that was bugged on magic online and they didn't feel like dealing with it. Uh, Quicksilver Fountain is the card that's bugged, by the way. You can see a picture on my Twitter if you're interested in how it was broken.
Having a Twitter command sounds great. Let me do that for you really quick. I guess Sam's fine. Steve helps our mana a little bit. Probably go like breeding pool into Steve into planes. I guess we could also do like uh, temple garden into island. A couple of field of runes are definitely a touch awkward sometimes, but they offer good utility, so I think they're worth playing two of. Elves. All right. Well, that makes that decision easy. So we have to do that now. Uh, we played two Terminus previously, and we were playing Serum Visions instead of Opt. But this is this is the first time I've played this archetype that's all in on Terminus, and I definitely think it's much better all in on Terminus because Terminus is very good in this format. In fact, the the list here on the website. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they drew five cards, but at least I miracle the Terminus. The list, the list on my website right now actually needs to be updated. So I'll do that after the stream. We got we got a three for one, okay? But they, they did just get a five for one. So we're actually going to play a game here still. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Does it look like Jund is happening today? I don't know. We'll see. I don't do I have plans tonight. I'll look at my race calendar. I don't have any plans tonight. I might stay on and do Jund just so it doesn't get pushed again. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling after the spirits deck and what time it is. I think I want to get Chad down here. And if we don't get to it today, remember it just stays in the queue. It'll be towards the top for the next time we play. I'm going to be offline tomorrow during the day. The kids' daycare is closed for development stuff for the staff. So I will not be online tomorrow. During the day, I might pop on tomorrow night. Uh, we beat Hollowed 1 2 0. I might do a Friday evening stream. We'll see how. See who else is on. If there's nobody else big streaming, I might stream tomorrow night. I just give this the D. I think I just give this the D, right? Oh, and I can path the clan caller. Yeah, that's a good call. Clean things up. I've got four cards left. Do I even need to path here? Like, the loyalty on the Gideon is kind of whatever. I think I just want to give myself a chance to sweep the board next turn. Or the next two turns, basically. I'm just going to let Gideon take this hit.
check out our options here in a second. By not giving them the fourth land here for another turn, I also make it so they can't uh, they can't necessarily terminus me right away. Which planeswalker is my favorite? A good question. Like from a from a flavor stand, like a, which specific planeswalker card or which specific planeswalker character? I think I like Kaya from a mechanic slash gameplay perspective. I really, I really like the way that card is designed. Uh, Green Black Elves has been playing four clan callers. The list on my website is four. Um, I don't know from a Vortho standpoint. I'm really not a big flavor guy. I believe in miracles. Beauty. You sex thing, sex thing. Beep, beep, If your hollowed fountain deck doesn't have for terminus, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. Do, 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 do. When, when people send me blue-white deck lists now, I'm mostly just like, like when people are like, what do you think of this deck list that did well? I'm basically just like looking at it and going, well, they didn't play four Terminus, so they must not have played much magic with this deck. It's, it's basically like where I'm at in life. Just like, I look at the deck list they put in front of me and it's like, well, does this have four, does this have four Terminus in it? If it does... Then they know what's up and they've played this deck. If it doesn't, they probably haven't played enough with it. V8 Gremlin X, thank you for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed this month. Why not main phase up looking for a super friend? Because I might want to miracle this again. Might I might have another miracle here. Ended up not mattering. Yeah, the, the ops have one purpose, chat. They miracle terminuses. Termini? Uh, sure. Yeah, if we get an opening to field the cavern, we will, but I just haven't had an opening yet. Noxious Revival is just not good. It, the card disadvantage is not worthwhile, is what it comes down to. Feels real bad. Really need a Jace or a Tefri here. Even a Nissa, just like gener start generating some card advantage. Sideboard is interesting. Sideboard is interesting, just like because it could be Graveyard Hate 2. That card could probably be sp sweet against Hollowed 1. Why am I not beating down with my colonnade? Um, yeah, maybe I'm being too defensive here. Maybe I'm just supposed to start attacking. I don't know. It like keeps their elves back from pressuring my Gideon. Like now we're definitely not attacking, right? I don't want to do this now because that could let them play a one drop this turn. We, we've already played two Terminuses. Two Termini. Start attacking because you're Miracle Terminus anyways. I don't think the pass is any indication. It's been a good game. We've hit, we've hit some Killer Terminuses. They've had uh, Termini. 
they've had a, a really good lead the stampede to keep them keep them going you want to leave the forest in your deck in case you draw baby nissa well i mean you know so i get to colonnade eat dwinnin's elite path something else Well, they don't have the mana to do anything with that just yet. So we got that going for us. This does let them regenerate an elf, though. I can snap Terminus. That is correct. So we have three, three, three sweepers in the deck right now. All of these coming at Shad. Um, they are... So is pathing before blocks a winning line or do I need to hit a sweeper? Basically, that's what I need to decide. And like, do I want to keep Tefri alive? If I path before blocks, Tefri is definitely dead. Whereas I could path this, block this, they regenerate. I guess I could still win without a sweeper here. Oh, visionaries at me. Oh, that's weird. So Tefri gets to live. All right, well, that makes this easy. That makes this super easy. Whatever, this guy, this guy. If this, if this was a Tefri, we'd be winning the game by a lot, right? Because we'd be drawing all these cards. Whatever this Planeswalker is. No, if they would have sent this at Gideon, Gideon would die because he would go to zero because that's how numbers work. One plus one plus one plus two is, is five. No, Nettle requires them to have a green card to untap it. And they, they only had one card in hand, so there's a non-zero chance they just like don't have a green card. Celestial Colonnade, punching the clock and going to work here. I'm holding these lands in my hand because we have Jace the Mind Sculptor in our deck. And he could turn them into spells for us. Oh. All the tiny green creatures look the same. Alright, so Chad is guaranteed dead. I think I am going to kill Nettle at this point just because it has the most power. Chad's dead. I take one. You've been ousted. <laughs> Gotta send some love. Thank you, Rev, for the bits. I appreciate it. Welcome. All right, so they can hit me for three if they want to trade off their shaman here. I almost feel like they need to, right? I guess not. Steve-O Bandito. Get in there, Steve. I believe in you, Steve. I think this Steve is going to die in combat chat. That's not true. They have Pendlehaven. Why not oust the token? Because I want them to have to redraw the 1-1. One, one. You know what the most tilting part there is? That was the last basic land in our deck. I 
I know it was correct to not not sack Steve there. I know it was correct to not sack Steve there. I'm just commenting on something that is true, which is that was the last basic land in our deck. Magic is an exceedingly low variance game that generally allows the better player to always win. There are 23 lands in our deck. And we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're actually not that far off. We're only at 13 lands in. I think it's like half our draws are lands. It's not, it's, it's close. Settle the Wreckage is a really bad magic card and you shouldn't play it. Settle the Wreckage is very hard to not telegraph with your plays when you're playing a deck like this. And you'd much rather just have an actual sweeper in your deck most of the time in my experience. All right, it's fine. This is why you get to play three games, chat. This is why you get to play three games. Stuff happens. It's okay. In the in the words of possibly the greatest poet of our generation, you just have to shake, shake, shake it off and move on to the next one. 20 Thunder 3, thank you for the eight month resubscription there. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. All right, uh, I don't think I want Tracker in this match, but I think the matches where your Termini are good, you don't want Tracker. Okay, so here's the thing, though, Draven's Thong. You need to think more, because if your control opponent passes with four mana up and they don't tap your team at your enter combat, they're then signifying Settle the Wreckage. So if your opponent is... If, you are, if your opponents are smart and understand the cards they should be thinking about, Settle the Wreckage is very telegraphed. Very, very telegraphed. I'm sure I'm going to search here, I think. Let's do it. Or they don't have anything. Sure, one of the two. We're now experiencing the back half of Terminus, which is drawing the card. <laughs> uh, ding. Does this hand have more spells than we had last game? I feel like it's close. We are not Fragnads. It is a very stock, typical Jund list. I'm going to shock this in because I'm going to opt looking for a land that if we hit a Terminus, I'd like to cast it. No, this hand, this hand's fine. We're like a Sweeper punishing them away from like catching back up. We have two cards in our hand that generate card advantage. No, the seven wasn't close. It was a not close seven and a not close six. Opt is basically Terminus, right? Perfect. Um, well. Huh. I think I'm supposed to play Nissa here because she blocks, but I really kind of want to oust this land War Elves. I think that's too aggressive, though. I think I just want to be mana efficient this turn. So, exclamation point deck gets you the current deck list that we are playing now. Exclamation point donation queue gets you a link to a Google spreadsheet where you can see all of the decks that I plan to play in the future. These are Those are the list of viewers submitted deck lists that are waiting to be played. This deck, like many of the decks that we play on stream, are decks that people submit. The people that 
Uh, support my content here. Dictate what we play when we play it. We have a very, very viewer-focused stream here. UV scene. Thank you very much for the $30 donation. Enjoy piloting this pile of modern legal cards. This. Boy, boy, do we have a deck for an upcoming Monday. You want to talk about... You gotta talk about sweet piles of cards. If you're ever looking for sweet decks, by the way, the donation queue is a great place to find sweet decks. <laughs> Thanks for the support, I appreciate it. All right, are we dead? They only drew two at that, that's good for us. Um, I think I'm actually just supposed to Jace Brainstorm to try and find Terminus to set up for next turn. Uh, that deck list will be on the donation queue after I sign off later tonight. So I update the queue every time I finish streaming. I'm just going to move on here. We're very dead without the Terminus. Oh, that was the last match, right? Wait, was it? That's... Oh, yeah. We basically, we were 2-1 and one and we got bugged. So we went 2-2 two and two in that league. I think we got a little bit unfortunate to lose that first match against Elves. Uh, believe it or not, I'm going to update the deck list on my website to match this one for the Bant Friends list. Um, play for Terminus and for Opt in your blue-white decks. I don't, I don't care what other 67 cards you register, but if you're playing a controlling blue-white shell in Modern right now, these eight cards should be in your deck. And you should probably be playing two to three Jace the Mind Sculptors to try and set these up on occasion as well, so... Well, I could have path Nissa to shuffle. Sure, that's a good line. Path Nissa is a good suggestion. You're right. If, assuming they didn't have uh, a way to drain us out, we could have path this to get another hit of Terminus. I do, and just for the record to state, for just to be on record, I think this deck is fundamentally strictly worse than the straight blue white control deck we've been playing on stream. There's a, excuse me. There's a reason why this Bant Friends disc deck is in the fan favorite section on my website. And blue white control is under proof. We could have pathed my Nissa during my upkeep. So I think this deck is sweet if you really want to explicitly play a bunch of planeswalkers. But I think if you're looking for something that's more competitive and less cute, you definitely want to look at the straight blue white control deck list. Uh, I have different versions. So you see, this is this cryptic command that if I right click here and hit update, it's going to turn it into the red one. So. I have a different version of the card. <laughs> 